Hello and welcome to lecture 35 of Math 1B03. In today's lecture, we're going to be looking at discrete dynamical systems. So I'm first going to be introducing what we mean by a discrete dynamical system, and then I'm going to explain the connections to eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So you might want to think of this particular lecture as kind of an application of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, so let me make myself disappear here. And here's kind of the setup to get us going, the way, way you should think of. So we have a square matrix, an n by n matrix, and we have some sort of vector, x naught. So it, x naught it has some particular values in it. And what we want to do is we want to consider the sequence of vectors that we get by taking x1 to be the vector that you get by multiplying the matrix x naught by a. And then x2 will be the, the new vector when you multiply your old vector x1 by a. And then we're going to keep doing this. So x3 will be equal to a times the vector x2 and so on. So the k plus 1 vector that I find is the vector that I'm going to get when I multiply the kth vector by the matrix a. Now this equation at the end here, so this equation right here is called a difference equation. So uh, a difference equation. So it's explaining how the vector changes as we go from one vector to the next vector in my sequence. And a dynamical system is a finite set of variables whose values change with time. Okay, and so what does this have to do with our sequence and above? above? So in the above, what you want to think about is that you're given some sort of initial vector x0, and it has y0 up to Oh, it should be a y1, not y0. We have a y1 to yn as the entries, and it's the yi's that are changing. Then the yi's are changing. So the var variables here are probably are telling us like what the first coordinate is, what the second coordinate is, and so on. So each coordinate is changing with time, and each coordinate is telling us a particular piece of information. So this hopefully will become a little bit clearer when I kind of set up an example that we'll study. Okay, and let's say that we have migration. We're going to look at some migration, and we're going to look at migration between particular planets. So we're in the future, and we can now travel back and forth between Earth and Mars here. So we have Earth on one side, Mars on the other. And in a given year, say 5% of the population of Earth will move to Mars, and 3% of the population uh, Mars will move back home to Earth. Well, if you, the other 97% of people on Mars decide to, if they're going to move, they're going to move back to Mars itself. Well, on Earth, 95% of the people uh, that are live there, if they move, they decide to move back to Earth. So here we have kind of a migration system between the two uh, two states or two planets. We kind of want to kind of keep track of this information, and we, obviously we want to have some sort of uh, kind of matrix to keep track of this. So I'm going to make a matrix here from this information, and so I want to think about I'm going from Earth to Earth, or I can go from Mars to Mars. So there's a bunch of different cases here, right? So I can go from Earth to Earth, and 95% of the people do that. Well the number of people that go from Earth to Mars is 5%. And then same thing, the number of people that go from Mars to Earth is 3%, and the number of people that go from Mars to Mars is 97%. So I kind of, let's get, strip some of this extra information away. And what we're interested in is this matrix right here. Okay, so this is kind of telling me how people are moving between the two planets on a given year. So uh, this is, maybe I should put this here for, for any given year. 
So for any, any given year, this is what we expect of the population. So we're assuming that it's kind of static. We're uh, in the sense that this is how people are always going to be moving between the two planets. Okay, so let's say that our initial vector is 0.6 and 0.4. So how should we interpret this? Well, th in the first place, we're going to put what the, val and the percentage of the population is on Earth. So that think about the total human population, and 60% is on Earth, and 40% is on Mars when we start uh, kind of keeping track of where people are going. So we have the, our initial state, and what we want to know is what is the percentage of, of the total human population after one year if we allow people to you know, hop on their spaceship and move between pla uh, planets. So to figure that out, the way that we can calculate that is we can use our matrix in order to calculate what percentage of people are on the various planets at any given time. And so let's kind of think about why this is true, right? Because the first coordinate, we'll think about it is if 60% if of the population is on Earth, 95% of those people will stay and we will get 3% of the 40%. So that means oh, at the end of one year, you do all the calculations, that means 58.2% of the population will be on uh, will be on Earth, and then calculating the population on Mars. Well, Mars gets 5% of the 6%, and it gets 97% of the 4, 40%. Sorry, I it should say 5% of the 60%, and 97% of the 40%, and that gives me. Uh, 0.418. So after one year, after our migration, 58% uh, of the population is on Earth, 41% of the population is on Mars, and if you look at our initial uh, setup, this should make sense because we have a net flow of people going to, more people are going, percentage-wise, are going to Mars versus the number of people leaving Mars. Okay, so that's happening after one year. But you know, you're, you're working on you know, the city council, or I guess planetary council, and you wanna kind of figure out you know, what's gonna happen in the future to kind of determine your services. And so that leaves a good question is, well, what happened, what does X to the K look like as, X, as K goes to infinity, right? So what we mean here is what we wanna keep doing is we wanna look at x2 times a times x1. So this will tell me what happens in year two. Then we, what we want to know is what happens in year three and so on. So what we want to know is what happens to uh, k as we let time go off to infinity. So we can think of k keeping track. So we'll pause here, I'll give you a chance to think about it, and then we'll come back to the answer or a way to get at an answer.